What's up, guys? Welcome back to the NGMI Podcast, or if you're new here, welcome to the NGMI Podcast. Be sure to subscribe, click that like button, smash it, smash the like button. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. If you're if you're on audio, leave us a, a splendid review because yeah. you're going to love this podcast before you even listen to it. And uh, today we have a couple of guests here. Kevin uh, does a lot of study on guests before He's they, the brains. they come the brains. in. So I think he had a couple of questions to start this off with. I did. Uh, who are you guys? You want to start? <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you, Kevin. <laughs> I didn't do any research. <laughs> Kevin doesn't know anything, really, yeah. besides like I always numbers. just show up. <laughs> Lovely. I'm Cobra. This is Cobra. I'm Alex. Uh, like, what, who are we? Uh, we make TikToks. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And uh, YouTube. content. Yeah, it's fun. Kind of tattoo just... artist. Yeah, tattoo Insane. artist. Oh. See, that's non-professional. Traits. That I didn't know, but I see your tattoos. And I mean, yeah, you do a good job. I was going to mention that. They're kind of sick. Like, I was shocked when she did them, and she was like, like she was really nervous to do it, because obviously they're permanent. And sure. Well, she you was also, like, like, were putting a lot of pressure. Well, I, I got, like, three at one time from her, too. <laughs> but... <laughs> I don't know. I like how, like, I think they're perfect, but depending on the line and how perfect the line is, I just like the the idea and the thought behind it. And she killed it. And ever since then, we do like three at a time at random, Damn. random moments. Well, if you ever want to have a tattoo party at my house and you can tattoo it for free, that would be. I'm just no, kidding. Yeah. no, I, I do that. I don't like being paid for it because I am not a professional. But you tattoo. You're doing She's done like work. all of our friends. Yeah. Yeah. We should have had you bring a tattoo gun here and give us all tattoos. <laughs> no, yeah, she loves doing <laughs> it. Like, cool. We'll have nights where we're just randomly, like, we're, we're bored and we're like, oh, we should do tattoos. And, and then she'll just tattoo, like, everyone in the house. Damn. And it's fun. That's sick. Like, everyone in my house has to, tattoos from Cobra. Yep. That's and then dope. We post it, and then all the professional because apparently and everyone's professional a professional just shit on tattoo artist. Really? I, I, I was they on look good once, and I had a bunch of tattoos from a professional tattoo artist, and everyone was like, wow, that guy's tattoos are trash. So, like, <laughs> they'll shit on anybody. <laughs> I no, they talk about people, like, talking about, like, well, someone posted a video of me tattooing my own foot, which is, like, it's my own foot. Yeah. I really don't give a fuck. Sure. Yeah. And someone's like, wow, you're really spreading bloodborne illnesses everywhere. I'm like, my blood is fine. <laughs> yeah. And they were just shitting on me for, like, safety and everything. I'm like, it's my own foot. If it falls off, it's my fault. Yeah. How right. bloodborne illness, like, it, are you tattooing your foot, then tattooing someone else yeah. with no. the same needle? Like, no, what, what like, the, like, like, like the blood is spreading. Sense. And I'm like, I don't understand that, but <laughs> all right, cool. That's ridiculous. People, people on the internet are crazy. Let's shit on anything. What you got else, Kevin? Nothing much. Just turned twenty-one yesterday. Yeah. No questions for that. <laughs> oh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Happy birthday. I'm out of questions. <laughs> that shot you. <laughs> no, I'm out of questions. That was the only question. I, I think brought. it's fucking nuts that you and I are the same age. Because I watched your guys' vines and like watching those like the Big Brother like thing. I always mm. thought you were younger than me. I always yeah. get that. Like at any time like so I post weird. and like people say they're like that kid's 21 or like that kid's 20. Like That's I can't cool. believe like, he's that old. Like he just graduated from uh, community college. Yeah. And what? People, people were like. This kid, I remember Graduated? when he couldn't fucking tie his shoes, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's because I posted like when I was like 11, then I didn't like do anything for years, so people didn't like see me or like see anything about me. Until, you look young too. Yeah, like you could be like 15, and I'd be like, yeah, right. Yeah, like I thought that you guys were maybe like 24, 25 ish, just sure. because like the the culture like you guys are on the right. internet like posting stuff i know there's a lot of young people on the internet so like that sounds weird and you don't look old you look very young and beautiful Thanks. sorry i didn't thank you i didn't it's moisturizing i, I think it, it, no, it, i mean it, it, i didn't mean them. to say like i thought you guys were older because oh, that's no. rude to say to a girl we, no, like, we always <laughs> we always get that we're older yeah because but it's also because we don't do the party scene and all yeah. that stuff but yeah. you also have like um when i watch some of your content like you you say honey and stuff like that which i sure. think is like an older thing to right. say to it's someone more common, like bitch and stuff like that now i feel like yeah <laughs> like <laughs> younger, younger people are like yo what up bitch yeah, <laughs> no, seriously, it's fucking nuts <laughs> they've been watching these couples and they like go after each other on social media it's like the like entertaining toxic couple and i'm like wow yeah <laughs> beautiful i mean you want to talk about vine like what was it back in the day it was uh, i love you bitch yeah i ain't yeah, never gonna yeah. stop, stop loving, loving you, you bitch, bitch. <laughs> do you miss that i miss vine i do yeah. miss vine but tiktok has like kind of taken over is like you can do vine stuff a lot of times i'll post videos and people are like scott's whole like tiktok page like sure. gives vine and i love it and i know i was looking like, at your vine the other day too 
Yeah. Not your vine, sorry. Your, your <laughs> oh, fuck. I was like, damn, how'd you find my vine? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever like reminisce on? Sorry, I don't want to like. Sorry, I'm, I'm in podcast mode. Do you ever reminisce on that shit? In a way, I, I, I like found some old videos of like me and Kevin, and I yeah. reposted it on TikTok. I think the last video I posted with me and you has like 1.6 million views, and it was you singing the part of Shaggy, <laughs> not not views, likes, mm-hmm. the Shaggy part of the song that you don't know what yeah. the fuck he's right, saying. Right, right, right. Yeah, Kevin's good at that. This the situation yeah, yeah. that you called a Pena. <laughs> I just can't believe like how popular it got because like it was kind of popular back in the day, but like it blew up on TikTok for. Like no reason. Yeah. Yeah. Humor, humor now, like especially on TikTok, is definitely like um, I don't know how to explain it. It's, it's, it's pieces kind of, of toast falling and, and Indian <laughs> people dressing up in suits to go to the menu. Yeah. It's, it's definitely <laughs> it's different, weird. but you can find certain people that have like yeah. the different mm-hmm. energy of like Vine and whatnot. I feel like I feel like that's becoming more prominent right now too. Because we're in that weird limbo phase of social media where like no one knows what the fuck to do. But I, I, I definitely don't know what to do. I like speaking of that. I noticed I, your last video was two months ago, and that video you were saying, "Sorry, I haven't posted in like months." Yeah. So I'm done vlogging. Done. I haven't said it yet, but yeah, Ooh. I'm like fully done. I just, I feel like, for a long time, the vlogs were fun because it was like it was like I started them when I was homeless, and it was fun because I was able to like go to my friends, and I felt like I had some sort of freedom coming out of like a abusive parental. Uh, guidance thing I have mm. and so coming out of it it was like a good time to kind of bond with my friends be able to post things and, you know I fell in love with like my dad's home videos and David's videos and it was something where like I felt no one had done what my dad was making in a like cool hip new modern way and so I fell in love with David's videos and started watching them and, and I, I was like you yeah, know I want to do that like it's something where I feel like I can do it so I started doing it and making it with my friends and started randomly doing really well and I kind of carried it on, but I didn't know really where I wanted to take it. Uh, and I continue. <laughs> yeah, we, we had a, we had brief technical issues there, but he's going to continue the story. As I don't know where it cut off. Really good Do you story. know where it cut off? It cut off. You mentioned your dad. Yeah, David was like the only person in my eyes at that time who was making videos similar to what my dad was doing. And he knew he was dying, so he left us a bunch of videos of like us as children. And like he would scare my mom, put on a mask, and he would film it all POV. And only at some times he'd have me film it, and I'd have to angle the camera so fucking far up. It was something cool where I'd watch them back and fell in love with it. And, you know, David's were doing really well. So I watched a bunch of them, a bunch of them studied how to edit like David, studied how to do a bunch of stuff because there was no one else. And then over time, you know, in the comparisons and everything, people were just like, oh, like, you know, David would want to be. And I was like, I genuinely never saw it. Like, from that time on, and then, you know, ever since I quit, I looked back and I'm like, you know what? I can totally understand that. <laughs> but that's something where it's like, you know, in the moment, like, this is me. Because it was. I grew up with that content. And, you know, you kind of take after the things you're inspired by. And over time, it was just like, fuck. And so I recently just signed a record label deal. Uh, with Atlantic Records. Thank you. <laughs> what records? Nice. Atlantic. Huh? Atlantic. Oh, fuck yeah. And it was something, I always wanted to do it. If you scroll down far enough on my social media, everything <clears throat> is just singing. And, you know, I write songs about dead people and shit that's <laughs> happened in my life. And I've always dreamed of it. And I wanted to leverage social media into it. And I did it. And, you know, the vlogs at a certain point when I moved out and, you know, started really focusing on music, it just really made me unhappy. I felt like they weren't true to me or like, you know, when I was in front of the camera, I hated it because I wanted to do music. And so finally went in front of the camera and now I'm working on a docu-series. And that was probably one of the most loaded answers I've ever given anyone. But I hope <laughs> I hope we got some of it. We loved it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was a great answer. But what was the question? The question was, uh, when was the last time I uploaded on YouTube video? Right. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a good answer. Oh, shit. I, I wanted to ask, you posted on your story that you hate uh, one of your songs. Yeah. Why? Um, Why? Right? It's the only demo I've ever taken. Like, the well, only song I've ever not written. Oh, you didn't write myself. that one. I wrote probably the... So I'm obsessed with, like, having a bridge in a song. So I, I mm-hmm. added the bridge and added the third chorus to be, like, a crazy, like, vocal moment because, like, mm-hmm. like, the raw vocal that I do. But um, it was the first song I didn't, like, fully write. Got that, that's it. That's fair. I just that did a sense, video yeah. where I reviewed some of my first songs mm-hmm. and my least favorite songs. And my one of my least favorite songs is Bad Time. And it's because someone wrote the second verse yeah and like gave it to me i was like it just doesn't feel like me like yeah. this this song doesn't feel like me so i don't really like it like it was it's interesting but i also noticed when i was listening to your music your first song and the third song that you have i feel like you vocally like improved a lot 
Thank you. Yeah, I've been taking vocal lessons five times a week. Wow. And then I do uh, piano lessons twice a week, guitar lessons twice a week, music theory lessons three times a week, and uh, kind of just study everything. Damn. Can you shred yeah. on a guitar yet? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm <laughs> fairly... He's I'm a fairly, big study guy. I'm really into music. Well, no, I did it for the social studying. media thing, too. Like, I studied right. analytics and, like, when people kind of cut off. And so, like, I found, like, a meta on TikTok right now with me and Cover where I just... I understand how the algorithm's going to work. And so all my TikToks go, like, 8 million views or whatnot, Damn. or four, 4 to 8, because I understand, like, the audience that I'm using and right. with music I noticed so many TikTokers and I don't I, not to be uh, do rude it. do it be rude but, <laughs> but like it's just they all did it very wrong mm. or at least some of them did I know name like, drop them no <laughs> but, Scott, <laughs> Scott, Scott did it wrong it's not, it's not, it's not like the, it's not working but like yeah, for yeah. me the way I would want to do it is I want to I have a lot to prove the same way as like you know I had a lot to prove going into YouTube it's like if I was going into acting right now what the fuck do I know about acting and the same thing is like so many people devoted their entire lives to music and, and <clears> learning <throat> about it and being good at it and I don't want to be necessarily a fraud like I want people to be able to hear my music on a pre-recording whether there's tune on it or not and then hear it live and it'd be the same thing mm -hmm. and so I have a lot to fucking learn and a lot to like kind of like study and, and be able to do it in my best opinion right where it's like there's no really right way but like i wanted to make sure that i was you know fully able to back up what the fuck i was doing because if you're a professional singer if you're singing and that's your job like and making music and writing songs about like i want to be able to convey the message perfectly and be able to understand what instrument i have if that makes sense which is your vocal yeah. cords i would say yeah and yeah. it is an issue it's the same thing it's like you're fucking yoked you work out every guy like i would assume a lot and so to. it's like <laughs> it's the same thing as your vocal cords and and what your voice is able to do you have to exercise it every day yeah, yeah. i mean I, I don't look like i exercise every day but my vocal cords feel like they are <laughs> <laughs> they feel exercised well you don't exercise them too much you gotta be careful exactly. or you get those Pretty nodes on them, them. Oh, sure. i don't want nodes sure yeah do you hate any of his songs has he ever sent you a, a demo or anything and you've been like "Ooh, i don't know if I'm <laughs> yes he's nodding yes. <laughs> yes dude i wrote a song about her called wild places and when i showed it i i show i stopped doing this and i stopped showing people my songs until they're done wait a second wait a second you told me to stop you yes yes oh please I'm sorry. stopping you so that she can answer <laughs> <laughs> no um sometimes i feel like well i know nothing about music at all and uh -huh. so i look at everything from like a consumer perspective of like would i listen to this on itunes and download it and have it but um there's some sometimes i'm like oh you have to change this lyric uh i don't like that i think this can be done better and we went to nashville recently and it was the first time i've ever sat in a recording session with him uh -huh. and it was very interesting to see everything and i was like oh well maybe not that take uh let's try <laughs> this like you should do this differently like but I only do it in like a constructive criticism. I'm not like, oh, I fucking hate everything. So Because you yeah. care. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. also, he's so it. harsh on himself. So sometimes I have to be like, no, that sounded good. Yeah. You're just singing the same thing 50 times in a row. Sure. But you don't realize it because you like hear the same thing. Right. I'm so, I'm so critical on myself. It's oh, me too. Nuts. I'm so hard. On well, how's music for you? How's music for me? Cause I, I, I saw you were for a little while now. You've been doing music, right? Yeah, I did uh, my first song, Sad Song, is my, like, first thing that fucking won't drop off the top of my Spotify, you know, it's that first <laughs> song, it went viral on Musical.ly, and then on TikTok, like, all the kids were like, it's a fast song, so we're gonna lip sync it fast on Musical.ly, and then it, like, <laughs> flipped to TikTok, and now there's, I don't know, Call Me Carson or something, is some influencer who got in trouble for some sexual allegations or something, so they started a new trend on TikTok, where I say, like, Crying on the daily, you can call me Carson, but they'll block their mouth when they say the Carson is like, oh wow, and they're like, it's it's not easy, it's it's not hard to not say a slur because they're saying this YouTuber is like a bad word now. What oh the wow, fuck? Oh. but you were um, referencing Carson Daly. I'm Marissa. Yeah, different different guy. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> I was like, that's not who my song's about. <laughs> but, okay. Beautiful. But yeah, I signed to a record label too. I think a year and a half ago. So. There's a lot of like sitting. Two record label Ooh, boys. Yeah. Okay, Kevin, you're next. Who, wait, uh, you I'm coming. Uh, Fearless Records under Concord. Oh, cool. Um, How do you like it? So, I, before I signed, I asked a lot of people what their ex like experiences were with labels, which kind of like scared me. So for a year, I didn't do it. Yeah, there's. I mean, my agent was really like pushing for it and knows the guys that work there and like likes the agents. Love that big jug of water, though. That <laughs> gotta stay hydrated. <laughs> there's vodka in there, straight. 
Bro. <laughs> I drink like two gallons a day. It's crazy. So I got yeah. my protein shaker cup full of piss over here. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like the record label. I just tend to sit on music a lot longer than I was used to because as like an independent artist, like releasing shit on YouTube, paying for my own music videos and stuff like that, it was so easy for me to be like, I want to do this, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to film this, and I'm going to put it out, and it's going to do great. Now it's like, what does the record label want at the same time? And we kind of like have to like have those discussions. It's, it's yeah. all about compromise. And lead time before you release a song. Right. Like before the record label, I released two songs like two days apart, which was a fucking dumbass move, to be honest. But <laughs> no, they have some good, some good and some bad to it. There's always going to be some good and some bad to someone else having a say in what you're doing, you know? Right. So... I like it, but I could also do without it. Yeah. I'm going to clip that and send it to Fearless. Yeah, send it to him. <laughs> you're, you're getting dropped, Put him in a corner. I'm getting dropped? Yeah, they're going to drop you. <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying oh, to get yeah. dropped. <laughs> it's such a tiptoe, dude. It's a weird fucking business for sure. Music is a lot pay to play, what I've learned. Yeah, so definitely. It's, like, it's something, it's such a, it's so different than at all these other industries. Yeah, and Todd was texting me yesterday. He's like, I got some money to play with. Like, do you think I should spend it on this music video? And I was like, I think that spending it on a music video versus like spending that same amount of money on one of your sketches is a better use of your money because you're going to get more streams on the song. The music video will probably get more views than a sketch because people don't really watch sketch comedy on YouTube anymore. Right. right. And it's just, it's just interesting. You have to like look. It sounds like you're very analytical when it comes to. Uh, social media and stuff that's how I was on Vine mm -hmm. and then once I like kind of started building a following and like I got on TikTok like my TikTok following like shot up because TikTok was like oh this is like a person who's <clears throat> been on the internet for a yeah. long time we're just gonna like promote his shit yeah and um, I got like lazy so I didn't start I, I didn't keep on doing the analytics of like social media and whatnot and like one of the things that David said to me like six years ago was like I've always admired you, like on Vine. Like you would post like three times a day, like delete a couple that didn't do well, but you'd be like, you'd look at like what was working and you'd do it. And I stopped doing that because yeah. I got like lazy and complacent. It's exhausting. To, like to think about like what works and right. like figure that out and post that shit. Shit, where are we going from here? <laughs> uh, I love this. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, wait, what are you doing? I, I go to school. That's about it. You yeah. just graduated, though, yeah. I graduated from my community college, so I'm finishing up my bachelor's. What are you What are you gonna do? Um, a bio major. So I'm trying to be a dentist. Oh fuck yeah! Yeah, yeah. Oh, Getting there. I have a few more semesters to finish up. Imagine um, you're like working on someone's teeth, and they're about to go out, and you just start doing that song that yeah. no one knows about Shaggy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can't tie my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I can't fall asleep. He's like, let me show you some shit. That's like nightmare shit, bro. Well, I got you. Yeah, right before they're going under. <laughs> I can't tie my shoes, but. <laughs> I can fix your teeth, bitch. Um, so you guys are 21 and 22, yeah, yes. and you've been dating for four years now. Mm -hmm. About yeah. Was that pre-social media or post-social mm -hmm. yes, media? Yes, pre-social media. Mm -hmm. I was doing media. the vlogs maybe like maybe a month before we started. No, it was, it was a, like two yeah. or three, I think. Maybe, yeah. It was like a good little bit of time. Do you want to tell the story? I yeah, want to, I want to hear this because I'm talking a lot. <laughs> yeah. I hate it though. You hate telling you hate the story. The, Why? You hate the story <laughs> or telling it? <laughs> yeah. But. Well, I basically the way we met sucked. Yeah, <laughs> I mean I it's it. not the love story you think. No, yeah, but um, I am from Hawaii, and I a person randomly messaged me on Instagram was like, "Hey, do you want to move in with me?" And I was like, "Sure." And so I moved in with someone, and it had been like a hometown friend of his. Uh -huh. And she basically posted me on Snapchat of me sleeping in the most awkward position in the entire world where I looked disgusting. Like my mouth was open, my hands were like really weird. And he swiped up on it and said, Oh, she's cute. No, I said, She's beautiful. Oh. oh. Yeah. Hey, and that's, then that's way different. Yeah. He's a gentleman. <laughs> Come on. Come on now. But then he asked for my number and I gave it to him. Uh, and we started were talking. You, in you weren't in Hawaii, though. No. No. No, I, we were long distance for like four months. Oh, three wow. months? Was, I think it was three, three or four months. Yeah, because yeah, you came out in March and we started talking in November. So, sorry, give me a second. In December, March? January. Well, no, I was here for Christmas. March, April, May, June. Yeah, Why didn't we, you wait we till were, June? You didn't to come move out. out until. Oh, I didn't move out for a while. <laughs> <laughs> visiting doesn't make it not long distance all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah. that, was then, a, so she, that was a, 
that was a Pride Month joke that just like totally went. You said one. Yeah. Wait. What? Repeat yeah. it. We didn't hear it. Yeah. Wait. Wait. It's, a joke came, is always funnier the second time. You, you said I came out in March, right? Yeah. And I said March, April, May, June. Why don't you wait till June to come out? Ah. <laughs> That's a good joke. <laughs> it was a terrible, oh, yeah. terrible, 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 terrible joke. Terrible joke. God, we then, went back for that. Yeah. No, <laughs> and then. Uh, and then, yeah, I told her I had a place to stay, and I was homeless at the time. You and did so it. She moved into the car with me. And, and Which is fine. Yeah. I mean, I kind of liked it. And that's where we that's filmed cool. our first video. And we filmed nice. our first video in, in the car, and, and from there, it blew up on TikTok. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. we got Because I posted on Snapchat. And, like, Snapchat, everyone's like, oh, this is fucking hilarious. Yeah. I was like, people like her being a crackhead and stuff and she had these like she weird energy into, spurts. Like, weird moods sometimes so i'd film <laughs> moods i had i just i just watched a video that was like 13 minutes of cover being a mood i did i did capitalize the merch on that one that <laughs> did very um well. and so then i posted uh, i posted on tiktok woke up to like 800k and i was like wow. shit. and so we kept going and it turned into this a relationship yeah <laughs> <laughs> those views turn into a relationship right? <laughs> um no but yeah and then so from there we got we got the money from all that stuff got an apartment moved all our friends in and then went up to did the hype house our stuff. housing situation wow. has been very interesting we've moved seven times the last three years yeah oh eight wow. times yeah. seven or eight times that's a lot of times yeah it's, it's was lot. living in the car your favorite part it was and i say this with the most privileged way i can <clears throat> i i miss it yeah and it was I, just simple carefree like you really we, didn't yeah, have you, to like worry about much you, you didn't have anything like that's the thing like we you could only look forward to things and as the more and more you go on and the more and more you kind of like you know and, and, and it sounds so stupid saying it but the more and more you kind of like thought of like achieving and like thought like your life would all of a sudden be like pain free and like no stress and no anything once you came into this position you glorified and romanticized as a kid yeah and then you get into that position and you're like wow none of that trauma like kind of disappeared that you thought yeah. it, 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 <laughs> it doesn't fix sound stupid at all because yeah, like yeah. i think about that all the time like i went from being you know a bartender or a construction worker and sure. like making like whatever amount of money per month to making like over a million dollars a year and like yeah that didn't change my situation like mentally or anything like that you know 100%. like being able to move into a house and then the other flip side of that is then when you stop making that amount of money then you're like oh shit yeah like yeah. i put myself in the situation where i can live like very comfortably yeah. it i it seems like awesome to be able to enjoy living in a car or whatever and looking forward to like achieving something versus the idea of being over here and the idea and, and instead of achieving being like am i gonna go down <laughs> right, yeah right, right. or like, like worrying about like you have to maintain right yeah. like when you're so high it's like what do i have to lose whether it's like when you're on the bottom it's like oh i have everything to gain yeah like i can't lose anything else really well, yeah, right and another thing no one talks about too is especially when your job is quite literally to be yourself on the internet and then <laughs> people stop subscribing to that idea you then think to yourself what is wrong with me that I'm not having people subscribe to what I'm doing? <laughs> and so it's like this whole thing. <laughs> well, no, it, it's not, no one talks about it. I, I genuinely think people don't yeah. think about it. It's like your job is to be yourself on the internet. No. Yeah. Whether or not it's yeah. like the jokes or whether or not it's like you're singing or whether or not it's your couple. You start to think once views go down and money stops coming in and you know you have all these stresses now all of a sudden, it's like what's wrong with us or what's wrong with me or like what what am i doing wrong and then you start thinking of your life when and job like in, at work in and in a, a nine to five job and your workload has gone down you can always identify kind of where the issue is or what what the underlying cause is of why you may not have as much workload or why you might not have someone in the office not like you and that's somewhere it's like you know your job our job is to be liked that is the whole entirety of our job right. and that's how we pay our bills is people end up liking us when people stop liking you you start to think what the fuck's wrong with us yeah Bro, you, like people say you're a David Do Dobrik ripoff, but you sound like me right now. <laughs> <laughs> that fucked me up for a while. I bet. I it's, bet. I think social media is also hard though because you have a nine to five job. You go into work and you leave work at work. Yeah, but you when you're doing homework. social media and it's everything, always. you it's always at home. It's like your work is twenty four seven. Yeah. Yeah. No, we had. Um, I went on vacation with uh, my girlfriend to Greece and Paris, and we met up with 
her two friends from New York that have nine to five jobs. And I was talking to them. And I was like, I'm kind of jealous that you guys can like go to work. And then when you're off work, you fucking go on vacation or you have a weekend or whatever. And like, I feel like we're always just kind of like, all right, content here, content there. Like you can they, never really have a vacation. Yeah. Right. And they, they noticed it too. They were like, Oh, you guys are like always like trying to like take a picture or film something or something like that. And it's really fucking that's a like, huge reason stop why that? I stopped. Like, I was going to go to, like, weddings, and I was going to go to, like, parties and, and all these things, and I was always thinking, what can I film there? Like, I didn't want to go to places, and I stopped hanging out with friends unless there was someone important or something cool that someone could do, and it started fucking up my ability to actually, like, conversate. And, like, I used to be very outgoing, and now it's, like, for me, it, I... Now, like I'm kind of building back and trying to get friendships again. And I, me and Cobra realized for a, a little while now, we have we don't really have that many friends. And the only people we're friends with, we live with. And it's like also, you know, whether or not I employ my friends or whether or not you know I pay them and stuff like that. It's like what you kind of lose track of what a friendship is or what a normal like president of it. And it's like I like to take care of my friends because they helped me when I was homeless. So I buy them motorcycles and I buy them all these things. And then yeah. people are like, normal friends don't do that. And it's just like. <laughs> trying to like re understand what the whole concept is which is such a bizarre thing well and i also feel like social media and like working in social media destroyed the sense of friendship because everything becomes transactional yeah especially whether you city. go over to your friend's house you're filming something when you go over and you leave yeah and 100%. it becomes a transactional relationship rather than like oh how are you doing today i even think about that in like a relationship standpoint like you know you're getting your girlfriend a gift or something yeah. like that and it's like am i going to film this one or not going to film this one like is it clickbait or is it because I actually wanted to do it? Like, yeah, that's been I, a big struggle with us. Well, no, with mm -hmm. me. <laughs> <laughs> it was something I had to, and especially I think the Netflix show kind of highlighted that. It was yeah, a little bit. With me, I was always thinking of, you know, when we're thirty and we're mar like, and we're married, we have kids, and all these things. It's like that's when I can like kind of like enjoy the things in life, but not realizing how every little thing she did for me, or every little moment she had, or everything I did for her, I would always film it. Mm -hmm. And so there's been plenty of things lately that I stopped filming and I, I, I've, I really enjoyed a lot of it. And it's crazy to kind of have, I have battles in my head of like, oh, should I film this? I would ask her permission and stuff. And I was just, mm -hmm. and she didn't want to make me upset or like make me be like, oh, damn, I missed out on something. And it was just like something I had to like do for myself, which is crazy, which you don't, probably don't even know I've been doing. But like that's no, I've noticed. Oh, cool. I've noticed. <laughs> Lovely. Hell yeah. Oh, good. You notice I've been working Amazing. on like this whole like <laughs> yeah. filming the gifts all I've the time. Noticed. But it came to a point where like we lived together and we sleep in the same bed, and the only time we actually hung out where there wasn't work involved was, was going, going to, to bed. Sleep. Wow. Oh, yeah. And There's so, work involved when I go to bed. I got to film that for OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, that was, that was something definitely really difficult for us. I don't know. D uh, I'm sorry, I interrupted you, I think. No, you didn't. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think you did. Um, I always lose my train of fucking thought. Because I interrupted you. No, you didn't interrupt me. <laughs> no, it's because you told me that you interrupted me. Oh, yep. that's what That made interrupted. Me, that's right. what made me lose my... How is, how is filming ne with Netflix? I hated it. Really? <sighs> with everything. In, Stressful like every or Every fiber of my being, I hated it. We have different outlooks on it, so I'll let her... I her hated it, too. Yeah, let's hear both sides. Well, at least for like... <laughs> at least for me... Are you at a show? What? No, 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 definitely not. That's, no, that's why I hated it. Not a I, that's why I hated it. You guys got a show. We never did. <laughs> oh my god, I remember about that. You, didn't you guys? You guys pitched it everywhere too, and like, didn't someone tell him no? Oh yeah, David was pitching. Someone told him no. I think, I think quite a few people told yeah, him no. no. <laughs> that's Loki kind of fucked up because then they came out with ours. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> really, I'm so sorry. That's fucking stupid. No, no, I'm totally kidding. I, 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 like I never, I never wanted to fucking film with Netflix. You think? Right. I, I went into social media thinking like, all right, I'm gonna start Vine. I'm gonna catapult my social media, and maybe I'll get into acting. And then right. I saw people going on like acting auditions and like all the work that they'd put into like learning a script. And I, yeah. I did a couple things where I did like a commercial where I had to like memorize lines, and it took me forever to fucking do it. And I was like. I'm just gonna stick to social media. It's way easier, yeah. and I just get to do whatever the fuck I want and make great money. So why would I? I mean, I would do a show if someone asked me to be like in a fucking Riverdale type yeah. campy show, and Hell it was really yeah. easy. I'd be like, sure. But I feel like the transition from music to to entertainment, like mu movies, is a lot easier than it is from social media to movies. Yeah. So I think it's also like trajectory wise too. If you enjoy music, I I, I like you know. I said this the other day where I was, someone was like, why don't you try acting? And I'm like, I'm going to try it for sure. But I just, I care more about music. I'm not opposed to it. But at the same time, I, you see Harry Styles right now. And like, I'm nowhere near 
fucking anything about him, but like just to see like how a lot of musicians are going to movies and acting and then like kind mm-hmm. of just doing that and going back to their shit is really cool. And yeah. it's really interesting to see like hard work trumps talent any day and Harry Styles is a very hard working person. So it's really cool to see like kind of like that that transition of like what the fuck is he gonna do? Yeah. yeah so he's definitely. killing it on both fronts right now. There's, I saw two movie trailers of that fucker. I know. It's crazy. <laughs> it's insane. Sorry, I totally interrupted you on the Netflix thing. Oh no, you're fine. I, yeah, so I, you hated Netflix. I hated it though. <laughs> Like, just imagine there's security cameras in your house every single day, 24-7 they are rolling, and there is someone in your garage watching everything. That's how what our show was. They would set they, up in the garage and yes, hang out there. Yes, We used to make them quesadillas. We had cameras in our house, and they were rolling 24-7, and Jesus. overnight, this man's job was to sit in the garage and write down what happened. So we could talk about it the next day. You guys are the damn yeah. Kardashians. Also, like, yeah. You know, yeah, it's COVID too. So in our comfort of our own home, we were told what to do, where we couldn't oh go, my things God. like that. A like home that we, we worked our ass off to buy too. And it's it's like Fuck. when you do social media, you put out what you want people to see, yeah. and you like keep like little parts of you private because it's like, well, what what do you have if like everyone knows everything? Right. Everyone, I don't want everyone knows everyone everything. My asshole. And see, I don't mind about that. <laughs> but like. <laughs> The way that just things were manipulated in the show, not even manipulated, but they wanted you to like go into like childhood trauma and all that stuff to not even like air it in the show. So it was like three months of like mental torture and like revisiting everything that you've ever like been sad about for them to Whoa. not put it in the show. Wow. Pissed yeah. me off. Damn. Yeah. Did you guys get any say in like the way they were cut or anything? No. Some, some people did, I believe, like producer credits and stuff like that. I believe right. Chase and Thomas had producer credits. I'm not sure exactly like what it was like, kind of like being in that position, considering like I was more focused on the vlogs at that time, and I was funneling way too much energy and time into them. But that was somewhere like I, I didn't really. I kind of saw it in the back of my head of like the show. I was like, oh, come do this at from two to five, or come do this at like at eight a.m. to eleven, and then kind of like you you move your day around about it. Yeah. And I I, I want to preface too. It's just like you know we're saying a lot of bad things about this industry. <laughs> it's got yeah. amazing perks to it. I think we can all attest that we have a mate. Like we've done some amazing things and have been able to accomplish amazing things. The thing is, is no one talks about the bad of it because. You know, it's why not flaunt my Lamborghini instead of fucking right. talk about my mental right. health. But it's something that's like no one talks about the bad of it. And that's why I think it's really cool to be able to like articulate, you know, this job is amazing. I feel like everyone knows it. Every goddamn influencer wants everyone to know how rich they are and how awesome their life is. Right. And so it's kind of like a nice thing to be able to say, like, you know, these are also the downsides of this job. The, yeah, the yeah. same way there's downsides to every great job. Right. Well, I don't yeah. have a Lamborghini. I just have a lot of mental issues. So that's what I let people know. <laughs> cool. There you go. Hey, how sick is it, guys? I'm fucking fucked up. <laughs> I mean, that's where, like, music is for me. Like, everyone's like, do you have a therapist? I'm like, it's my, my writers and my producers. Because it's like, you know, you talk about something shit you've gone through. And I feel you you definitely can relate to this. I've, I've said like, the same thing. Where, like, music, like, writing songs and stuff about oh. mental health and, and the way that you're feeling is, is kind of like a therapy for me, I did recently last week go to my first therapy session. Actually, so Woo-hoo. how was it? No, I'm doubled up. It was great. She reminded me of my dad a little bit. My dad's always like, "Don't look at the fucking side effects of the sure. medicine. Like you're not, you, you know, you're all you're gonna shit vomit. Yeah, what are you gonna do? Cry yeah. blood and fucking die of a heart attack. That's what all the side effects say. Just fucking take the thing and you're fine. <laughs> and like my therapist was like, "You are OCD and you have a form of OCD." in like hypervigilance to like what's going on in your body like you're, yeah. you're panicking about uh, a twitch in your chest being like a heart attack or a migraine being a, a fucking brain tumor and shit like that like or having a panic attack in a mall and, and passing out because I used to pass out from panic attacks sure. um, but she was like I mean the bottom line is I could step off a curb and break my neck or I could get hit by a bus or a nuclear bomb could drop and we could all die or instead of a nuclear bomb dropping and we all die when that drops we get sick from radiation poisoning and die three days later and that'd be fucking horrible and yeah. like so many bad things could happen but why worry about it until it happens right you know and i was like that's that's a great way to look at it and i know that but it's really hard not to worry about <laughs> shit like, yeah. i'm i'm the same way especially like with how life is right now too i have a bullet in my lung and i don't i haven't gone to the doctor since and quite literally i because i'm scared of getting my blood drawn so I'm, you have a bullet in your lung? <laughs> yeah, so it's capsulized in my lung. They couldn't take it out because if they were to take it out, there was a chance of breaking my ribs and dying. Whoa, you got shot? Shit. Yeah. 
with a it's a 177 grain so essentially like <sighs> uh air rifle like not i wouldn't say it's like an air rifle that you would shoot deer with like a gotcha. okay. holy is it like a BB bullet or a bullet bullet? It's in between a BB and a bullet bullet. You know how there's a 22 LR? It's like a 22 rifle. Have you ever heard of that? I don't know too much about guns. Think of like a pistol being a 9mm. And I don't think we should really talk about guns. Um, it's, <laughs> it's a, it, it, imagine a BB, but um, steel, and the back end of it is flat, and the front end of it is pointy. It's meant to shoot deer, and it's meant to play pinball with someone in their yeah. insides. Wow. Um, how long has uh, it been in there? Since I was 17. Wow. Damn. And so it was an accident and things happen and stuff like that. But like, it was just more work to kind of like keep, take it out than it was to keep it in. Well, right. it would have killed you to take it out. Yeah. And so it, it was something that where, you know, I'm scared because if I fall from a certain height on my back, it could rupture Dislodge. and I could bleed oh, wow. internally. I can't get an MRI. And so if I get an MRI and let's say I'm unconscious. What were you doing on that trampoline, man? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, you can't get an MRI because of the bullet. Yeah, well, because uh, MRI is a giant, giant magnet. Yeah. So it'll literally rip it out. Oh, right. My my buddy had a, a BB that got shot into his eye and it went behind his eye. So he that was the same thing with him. Like he was he could see and everything. He was fine. It just like it somehow went behind his eye. So he's like, I can never get an MRI because it will fucking. Yeah. Holy fuck. Yeah. 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 So it's like it's the same thing for me, and it's, it's scary because it's like you know. I'm always scared, like, I, if I get chest pain, like, I'm like, oh my God, is it ruptured? Like, and, and it's a feeling where it's like, I haven't gone to the doctor because I'm scared of getting my blood drawn. Yeah. And so I went to the doctor, <laughs> like, I literally tried. And, you know, I'm an adult now. I don't do, I haven't gone, I don't go to a dent, like, I, I go to a dentist, but like, I, I didn't go to a dentist for a while. I didn't do a doc, I didn't have life insurance or health insurance. I didn't have yeah. anything. I didn't understand how real life was because, nope, I didn't have parents to show me. And so I went to the doctor. I was like, you know, I'm being an adult. This is going to be great. I'm going to get a checkup. Hopefully they're not going to stick a finger up my ass and we're good. <laughs> I go there and they're like, okay, yeah. Like I explained the whole situation to him. He's like, okay, cool. You know, we can't really tell you anything unless you get your blood drawn. I was like, oh, cool. I'm trying to be like an adult about it. I'm like, I'm going to get my blood drawn. I'm like, it's cool. And he shows me the, the, what they're going to do. And he's like, I'll be right back. I left. And I never went back. <laughs> I <laughs> never went back. Is it the needle or the blood? What scares you? I, about I know that? I pass out every time, and I don't know what it is, but it's like I have a history to pass out, like you do, where mm -hmm. it was just, like different circumstances. If you see of someone with a cut in blood, do you pass out? Or yes, not? and so I can't oh. see broken well, bones. Broken she bones watches Grey's Anatomy, and I can't Fuck. do it. Blood. Oh my god. Yeah, my girlfriend watches Grey's Anatomy, and I'll watch it, and I'll be like, I gotta walk out of the room because like someone will be having like a fucking heart attack, and I'm like, oh god, maybe me. <laughs> I can't, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, can't, I can't watch people eat shit either. Everyone watches, uh, all my friends watch these fail videos of like people eating <laughs> shit and all these things. I can't do it. I can't watch <laughs> really? it. If I, I break a bone, I can't see it, or else Whoa. I will literally have a heart attack. We actually have a doctor coming in to draw your blood. <laughs> oh, second. The Bro. first time I passed out. Honestly, I was... I'd probably do it here. No, I'm going to lie. <laughs> Fuck, we should have. The first time I passed out, I was riding a bicycle and I what? like clipped a fucking brick wall sure and like stub my thumb and my thumb started bleeding i was young but like i was like <gasps> and i oh passed out <laughs> that's because i, saw the like, I can't thumb. do dentists at all I have, to put, I have to be put to sleep kevin she's not gonna really? do really okay. <laughs> <laughs> no i have a dentist appointment on wednesday and i he gives me sedatives to take before i go wow. into the appointment wow. and then i don't remember anything he told me it's like i'm being politely roofied that's nuts i just oh learned i have to get God. my four wisdom teeth out recently oh you do now so that's making 24 teeth that i have to get pulled now Kevin used to go to the dentist once a week. Yeah. Why? For, for five years. His teeth are so fucked. Yeah. Why? He I, had I, like I double know, teeth. I had like really like layered teeth. So I'd have to go in like every week to get my braces changed because if I did it like once a month, it'd take like 10 years. What the fuck? It'd take like forever. Yeah. It so disgusting. it still took five years, but got <laughs> are it done. Are your teeth real? Yeah. Bro, those are fucking gnarly. Thanks. You're welcome. Give me a smile. <laughs> you got nice teeth. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why. They just... I, you tongue smile? Yeah, it makes my face look skinnier. <laughs> I literally, dude, I was, so I, I, I used to be really, really like, I don't know what it was. I have, I, I went to a institution because I was anorexic. And so I had really bad weight problems. And I mm -hmm. can never tell if I'm skinny or fat. And I, I don't know if that's body dysmorphia or if that's just delusion. But it's something for it's me body where. body yep. Is it? <laughs> yes. So it's when I look in the mirror, I cannot tell what I am. Whether I'm, I went all the way up to 240 pounds uh, last year. And, you know, I was always, I, I went down to like 99 pounds at 5'7", you know, Whoa. I've, I've had my moments and I went to a, uh, they, I, I you could have wrestled 103s and if you wrestled. 
party? You could have wrestled at one of threes. I, I still I, I can't fight, dude. I'm a fucking pussy. Um, really? No, but yeah. So I I, I, I believe that's body dysmorphia. And what I would do is I would look at myself in the mirror, and I would figure out how to make myself look skinnier. And so I would like you know keep in mind I'm, I'm at this point I'm, I believe I'm skinny I think, and I would bite my cheeks, and now I have these like like really weird cheeks right like, now on the inside where they're just always cut up. Uh, Even though I don't do it anymore, yeah, and I you bite your cheeks to give you yourself like cheek dimples or yeah, like that to make my I thought it made my 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 skin look oh. better or like my my jaw like my face narrower, and then I would chew gum profusely at all moments to kind of thought it would work out my mouth, and then I thought that at one point too. Yeah, and then I would I would do I start drinking a gallon of water every single day because I would learn that it would work like lose body fat or really like flushes, water weight. flushes shit out of your body so mm-hmm. ever since then I can't I feel like I'm dehydrated if I don't carry water around me so I always have a gallon of water everywhere I go no matter what and I drink about a gallon and a half a day and wow. the smiling with my tongue thing is actually funny because I was doing that since I was 15 and I did oh. it because if you smile and you have your tongue out it lowers your jaw and so when I lower my jaw and I smile like this my, my and it does that. I look like I have a jawline, and I oh. look like I'm skinnier. And ever, I can't figure out how to smile without it. Like I can do this, and I feel like I look fat. And it's weird, but yeah, that's wow. the reason behind it, which is fucking crazy. Yeah. It, it just so happens David smiles like that too. <laughs> and so when I did when I when I started all this stuff, and you know I was smiling, everyone's like, "What the fuck?" I'm like, "No." Yeah, you have a story. Checks out. We we believe the story. <laughs> <laughs> story. But it's we crazy. Believe. I'll tell these stories. Was, it was it's pretty elaborate story. story that you just fucking made up there. Yeah, <laughs> I'll tell story. these stories, and people like the comments below will be like. Like, yeah, bullshit. And everyone, like, goes in and it's like, that's a fucking made-up story. I'm like, god damn it. I wish uh, I could show you Dude, at life. the end of the day, who gives a fuck? See, and I learned right? that after that's, a while. That's dude. that's it. Like, I'm sure that it was probably tough for you. And, like, th- there was times, I'll be honest, like, I've watched some of your videos, like, in the past, like, years ago. And I was like, what the hell? He's laughing the same way. He's got the tongue <laughs> thing Scott, out. there's times I watch my own videos. Like that. <laughs> it's not unique. And also, I never faulted anyone. No, I remember but, one point. Oh, I'm so sorry. I, I'm just saying, like, I, like I'm not shitting on you for it. I wouldn't shit on you for it. Like, I've done videos where I'm like vlogging, like David Dobrik, and like, I just said his name really weird. <laughs> Dobrik. I know. <laughs> I said his full name too. <laughs> <laughs> but well, that's how I clickbaited the video. Got it. With, okay. with both. But like, everyone takes inspiration from people, regardless of yeah. whether they're trying to or not. Like, I've done shit where I'm like, you know, I want to sound like fucking Freddie Mercury when I'm on stage, so I'm like trying to do a high-pitched voice that i can't fucking do like yeah or shit that i can do like people shut the fuck up man <laughs> i don't know where i'm going with this but like it like who gives a fuck it's been a problem for me and it's a problem for me because a lot of the comments that i had saw back then made me kind of adjust is this really who i am and now i'm very self-conscious about the way i speak my diction, my laugh, which again is something that's like, you know, I never purposely put on, but even then it's like, you know, some, when I started losing weight, I was getting comments of like, I had to like filter out the David Dobrik name because all my comments were, he's losing weight just like David. And then it was like, I started, uh, I bought like my dream car, which was a Ferrari and I have a whole story on that, but it's just, I bought that car and then everyone's like, oh, David has that car. And then I bought like, you know, it's, it's a whole thing where like, no matter what I did yeah. and no matter where I went or what I, who I hung out with, it was something where like, you know, it would get to my head to the point where I just had to filter out the comments because I didn't want to do the zero comments because then everyone would be like, oh, like we're just going to get him back once he puts comments back on. Right. Yeah. And so even to this day, as I'm, you know, stopped vlogging and as I'm, you know, tr- starting this new chapter in my life where I feel like I'm authentically being myself, uh-huh. um, making music. It's something that I, I, I think I struggle with to this day of just trying to figure out, like, I'll, I'll say something or I'll laugh a certain way or I'll do something and I have to think of in the back of my head as David done it or as any way of this not officially me. And it's, it's sure. cool, but you, it's also fucked. In the, yeah. back, in the back of your head, but, like, you really shouldn't have to think about that stuff. Like, I've, I had an ex-girlfriend that I did a lot of stuff with on YouTube and now sure. I have a, a current girlfriend that I do a lot of stuff with on YouTube. And the fact of the matter is, like... I could do a similar video to one I did with my ex-girlfriend and people be like, oh, he's doing the same thing with her that he did with the other one. And it's like, yeah, I'm I'm making a YouTube video. Like, everyone does this shit, you know? It's not like, it's not like I'm fucking copying 
the old girl with the new girl. Like it's it's just me doing a YouTube video. Right. Right. So also, I think everyone's dream car is like a Ferrari. So that's not even like <laughs> yeah. a weird thing. It's, it's not even the same. It's not Ferrari. like some obscure. It's not like, even the same. It's just one. a Ferrari. And what? Fucking, it's just a Ferrari. It's a Ferrari 488. I believe David had a 458 oh. Italia, which was uh, the convertible. Yeah, you yeah, wouldn't know that, huh? Yeah. So okay. you could get a separate one. I'm a car guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah. It, I mean, on the on the line, like the couples thing too. I mean, when you were doing your videos and stuff like that, was that something where, like, you know, were you nervous to film with another, like, a girl that you genuinely cared about and loved, and you wanted to kind of have her a part of your life? But you did you get hate for that, or like, what was that like? Oh, I got I got shit on for for that for a little bit. Like it was like oh, she, like, but I got I got shit on because of like the Ethan Klein Trisha thing, where Trisha was saying that. Uh, my girlfriend looks exactly like my previous girlfriend and I have a type where I don't think they look alike at oh, all. Really? Yeah. They don't act alike either. They're not fucking the same. Sure. They have curly yeah, hair and they're like like wavy hair and they're blonde. Well, she's not blonde anymore. She's got red hair. She's done. She's done being blonde. She's like, no, I'm not going to be right, compared right. anymore. Did that, <laughs> did that affect you guys at all? Or you kind of just said, fuck it, whatever. Um, it affected us for a while where it was like... Uh, and you can tell me to fuck off. I'm sorry. I'm just really interested in the story. <laughs> oh, no, no, I know. This is great. Um, it affected us for a while, especially like after Trisha started making videos about like... Yeah, her. when Trisha goes on, somebody she doesn't let off. Yeah, and, and she had a big fan base and people were like... You know, commenting on my girlfriend's page, like, shit, like, well, he just fucking like copied you from the other one, and blah right. blah blah, and like, I mean, there was there was so much more. Like, there was at one point where I was getting like a hundred thousand fucking messages and comments and YouTube comments and Jeez. shit for a while that was just like all negative shit about like the possibility of me cheating on my ex girlfriend with my new girlfriend, which was completely false no no fucking chance there that didn't happen there was no sure. overlap and yeah. like this narrative was like spun on the internet that made everyone be like well just wait till he dumps you for another girl that looks just like you and blah 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 like jesus yeah. like it just became Christ. this huge thing and she would get comments from like do you get text messages from friends because of comments she was getting on photos of us that yeah. were like what's going on like is your boyfriend like a bad guy and like <laughs> stuff like this and like <laughs> I don't it was really weird like she was yeah. being like shamed for being my girlfriend and for being a home wrecker which she wasn't and it was right. just yeah. it was it was really tough for a minute like she had like sobbing fits where she was like I, I don't know what the, what the mm. fuck do I do yeah, <laughs> like, I, didn't do fucking, I didn't fucking do anything I think it's really cool though when like and, and shitty stuff like that too like I mean Cobra and I have gone through it a good amount we're like you know again our relationship fully out there to be judged and so it makes you think like, oh shit, like a real bad couple and whatnot. And a lot of the cool thing about that is if you, you have two options in that situation. And I learned this after consistently going through uh, drama online with Cover, where it was like, you know, we're not usually in drama, but when we were, there was probably two things. It was something where it grew us together more because it felt as if it was us against everything else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was something where it's like, you can, you can give into it and you can think it and you can question your morals or question your relationship or question whatever. Or you can, you know, grow stronger from it. And it's, it's very interesting. And I, I started having this outlook on life when people start dying. And it's something that I would not be exactly where I am today and the person that I am today without my dad and my mom, whether or not the good and the bad. Mm -hmm. And it's cool to kind of like, you know, have that perspective on everything in life that something bad happens to you. There's always a how underlying means to an end of, you know, this has made me stronger in so many ways yeah and so it's it's cool because when you apply it to your relationship and, and things like that and even like i tell cover all the time when we get in arguments we get in the dumbest arguments but when we do fight and we argue and, it, and it's so normal i look at her and i laugh and she's like crying she's like why are you laughing i'm like this is good you're telling me what you how you feel and you're telling me what your problems are my, i'm telling you what my problems are and we're able to at the end of the day go, get into bed lay down and be able to be like, you know, I love this girl and I know a little more about her. And so it's like you apply that to fucking everything in life, it, the, nothing can fucking stop you. Because it's like, no matter what the fuck, and I've gone through a lot of shit. And I'm very public about what I've gone through as well. And, and, it, and there's more and more things that I'm getting more comfortable sharing. And it's something sick because this is where the fuck you become who you are. Yeah. Uh, I feel it's a cool outlook on life, but some people th may call me crazy. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I wouldn't call you crazy. I think that's. I think that's great. You yeah. fucking the the ability to overcome negative situation. Sure, turn is, negatives into positives. But negative experiences, period cramps, 
You get those? <laughs> good segue, bro. Was that a good yeah, transition? Yeah. Or a <laughs> segue? That was fucking no downtime. That was good. Wow. Right? No downtime. Oh, wow. You a podcast <laughs> host? What was that? Dude, uh, negative experiences. You get period cramps or what? <laughs> That's like a good line <laughs> at a bar. <laughs> yeah, hey, pick up line, Kevin. You get period cramps. Kevin, you can use that. <laughs> yeah, there can't wait go. to go to the bars. <laughs> I saw it. Your time. first pickup line. Yeah. <laughs> <the bar. laughs> Because I got the good. thing for you. If you get period cramps, I got these happy face hats for you guys. Wow. Oh, wait, actually, no, not even I've been wearing a lot of hats lately. This is fire. And oh, those uh, are cool. Also, help with period cramps. Some <laughs> some ultra cooling roll on gel, which you can just rub right here <laughs> on the stomach area. He's thinking ahead. Yeah. yeah. And, the uh, happy face brand. The happy face brand. This is our CBD company, Happy Face. We also have hemp smoked cigarettes. I see you sucking that vape. These are all natural, organic, better for you than the vapes. I got yeah, I got addicted to cigarettes when I was homeless. Do they and smell thing. like weed? Um, no, they smell like cigarettes oh, and weed. Oh. They smell like both. <laughs> yeah, kind of mixed both. <laughs> and these are the best thing: the Happy Face watermelon gummies. They're like actually, the Sour Patch Kids. They're like Where Sour they? Patch, but not as sour. Oh, sweet! And there's no like, drugs in them. Just CBD. Just CBD. No THC. Can't get you high. Oh, beautiful. Won't yeah. get you high. It just makes you not cry. Oh, wow. oh, this guy's good. <laughs> yeah, you have equity in this. Yeah, I own the company. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you have like all that. Got it. Disaster company. Well, you guys can take it. You nice can leave hat. it if you don't want it. Whatever the fuck. No, I'm, but I'm gonna keep it. I, the only the so cigarettes I don't, probably not. Yeah, I, I I don't smoke weed, but I I do smoke CBD. Cool. Well, that's, those are CBD yeah, cigarettes. No weed in there. They're not weed. Okay, so period cramps. Yes. Yes. Recently diagnosed with endometriosis. Yes. So I have endometriosis and PCOS. Uh huh. What's PCOS? It's polycystic ovarian syndrome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Does that but, mean you get like cysts? Well, endometriosis, I basically get cysts inside and outside of my uterus. Okay. Which is not fun. They pop all the time. It's not a happy thing. But, um, PCOS is something completely separate from it. And basically, like, if you look on an ultrasound, your ovaries are supposed to be completely black and mine have little holes in them. Ooh. So it affects fertility amongst a lot of other things. So is that like, because my girlfriend has the, when she gets her period, like the first day is usually like heating pad, laying a bath, like the whole day is like oh, a complete Oh, my periods are wash. horrid. Yeah. Horrid. You don't get them a lot, though. I don't get them a lot, but it was because I was on birth control, uh, which is why I don't get them Did a you lot. stop doing that? I did because of the hormones that my birth control was affected my condition worse mm -hmm. than if I were to not take birth control and just treat it. So I'm on two different medications right now. I'll be on three soon. Uh, one's a shot I have to take every week, which is not fun. That's why we were late. <laughs> oh, <laughs> jumping. Had, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, had a sticker with yeah. the needle and <laughs> we it's so i started fun. filming the process too to kind of make it fun like i started like dressing up and because she hates shots and i also it's think like it's my like, number one like number one yeah fear. and i also thought it was yeah. something like kind of uh, shitty situation turned beautiful where you, like a lot of people i've learned after posting these videos a lot of them have this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's something cool to kind of like relate to cover in a way where you know this is like a positive uh like way of kind of going about it instead of like viewing it as such a negative thing like she's getting shots and like all yeah. these terrible things kind of adding a fun element to it yeah but uh, i don't understand any of the medication so when i try to advocate <laughs> on her behalf it's absolutely god awful because people <laughs> then go but you said this i'm like i'm i'm learning as we go yeah yeah but it is always positive to shine a light on something yeah. that other people are going through that they don't even know they're going through that like, is very true and i mean so the shots are pcos like has a lot of different side effects to it whether it's hair loss um a lot of it's weight gain and things like that. And so basically my PCOS makes me insulin resistant. So when I eat sugar or carbs that breaks down into glucose, which breaks down into insulin, and it tries to process through my body, my body doesn't like it. So it stores it instead of processing it, which mm. if I weren't to have treated it, I would have gotten diabetes in like mm -hmm. a year, year and a half probably. Wow. When did you, like, did you always have, like, the really ter terrible periods, or did they start happening and then you realize that you, like, had developed endometriosis and PCOS, or? My periods have always been horrible. Gotcha. And so when I was 18, I went into a gyno, and they looked at me and they're like, you have, 
that? Something weird just popped. I was like, what popped? I'm snapping off right now. How the fuck? Sorry. Kevin's a freak. But um, I basically went into went to a gyno when I was 18, and they looked at everything. They're like, you have endometriosis, and you're completely infertile. You'll never have children. Damn. And so I was like, oh, okay. So accepted the fact that I was, like, going to adopt kids and, like, got over all that stuff and never got treated for it besides being put on birth control because it's, like, birth control, everyone thinks, is, like, uncover all, like, to fix things. But I recently have had more and more problems, and so I went into – a gyno that was recommended to me by a bunch of people who have the same conditions as I do and I went in and she like explained everything put me on medications and it's going a lot a lot better is it is it like I mean I don't know how long it's been it's been like a few months or it's been two months I want to say two or three months and it like doesn't go away like you, it's just the... maintaining gotcha basically. it alleviates any pain so far or not? um I had my period, I think, once, and it helps a lot there, but I used to get cysts that would pop randomly that weren't on my period, so it would feel like a knife was just, like, stabbed into my stomach, Jeez. and I would literally have to, like, hold on to something, but um, the process that we're going through is crazy, because once I finish my treatment, I have to start IVF treatment to collect eggs, mm -hmm. because if I don't if we don't have kids by the time I'm like 25, then the quality and quantity drastically drops. And so we want to like collect them and have them just in case, which it's a little scary, but. Yeah. Well, it's good to know. Yeah. 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 It Head is time. good to know. Yeah. You're catching it early. My girlfriend's 30. So if she has it, then uh, five years is five years past 25 <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> fuck yeah. no i'm sorry that you're going through that and sorry if that was like an uncomfortable question no no, no you're fine i mean I, it's good to talk about it definitely because i once we started posting the videos i didn't know how like realize how many people are going through the same thing it's really difficult to like find proper treatment for this it is and i've been to multiple doctors who have just like said birth control you're fine like sorry there's nothing we can do and then finally went to a doctor who specializes it's like a doctor who's not covered by insurance so it's like really expensive but that's like her specialty how long have we been talking just uh, one hour okay that's pretty good if we can keep talking we can stop talking that's Whatever really all up to you all we again don't you. have anything to do today <laughs> wonderful and i don't know if you like talking or not <laughs> oh i fucking hate talking i love doing this though <laughs> it's, it's, it's really nice in a way where it's I, I was always under the assumption you guys absolutely fucking hated me no so it's, it's cool to no. like kind of have conversations again. <laughs> what <Yeah>. was that <laughs> no. no why we wouldn't hate you <laughs> what no it's, it's just it's cool it's, it's, it's definitely like I don't know how to explain it I think you know, I've been, I grew up doing this and like, you, you know, I'm, I feel like I'm maturing with my audience, but also with the people around me. And it's, it's kind of cool to like, look back and, you know, understand what's bad and what's good. And, and also like kind of grow as a person, which is fun. I like the vape in your shoe. I was going to mention that as well. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Efficient. Bro, I've been trying to get off that shit. You just put your foot up to your mouth and go. <laughs> I've never, I don't know if I'm flexible. And, yeah, we're not going to try that. <laughs> Dude, I don't, he cracked his elbow. I ain't in the mood of cracking this. <laughs> yeah, Kevin, Kevin's yeah. got some weird joints. I, I, I feel like that's foreshadowing it. in real life. <laughs> as far as like hating you and whatnot, like, no, it's actually really cool to meet you in person and talk to you guys in person and see what you're like. And you have a lot of very wise thoughts for a 21 year old and, and 22 year old. Like, it's, it's cool to hear your perspective on things and what you've been through with social media and how it how it has affected you and the things that you're doing and and like i relate to it a lot and as like a i'm 30 i'm nine years older than you so i'm like i've been doing this for since i was like 21 20 sure. as well and uh the just the the waves and the the way things work algorithms changing youtube changing whether you're giving a gift to your girlfriend off camera or on camera like all this shit is something that i relate to like heavily i feel like no one thinks about it either i feel like everyone just kind of sees like the content whether it's it's your content or my content or, or literally anyone's content and like there's a lot of thought go that goes behind it but even then behind the scenes there's a lot of like self-reflection that happens that i feel like no one realizes oh yeah which is is really bizarre to think about what do you see yourself 
doing? I don't know how to phrase this question because everyone knows, where do you see yourself in five years? And it's like five years ago, we don't see myself here. So it's yeah. like, like, what exactly for you do you think is like the goal of what you see yourself being happy doing? Wow, that was fucking weird. Like, what, Good do, you, question, what, do, you, though. what do you see yourself being happy like in five years? Be like, I'm, I'd be happy if I was doing that. You guys go first. I think for me, making music about just what's going on in my life, I think, and, and performing it and people like resonating with it. You're saying five years from now? Yeah. Living on a farm oh. with like two kids. Uh-huh. What yeah. animals would be on the farm? A fuckload of animals. Nice. <laughs> Slaughter Slaughterhouse Farm? No. No, we have chickens, dude. Have, she came up with chickens. I have so many goddamn animals, it's insane. 106. 26. Yeah, I could do two kids by 26. That seems possible. Sick. <laughs> Family channel. Here we go. <laughs> I don't think I could ever do that. I don't think after vlogging I could ever film like my kids' first steps and post it, being like, "Oh yeah, let me." Because imagine yeah. like trying to clickbait your. Well, kid. there's also no a lot of like controversy going around Family Channels now. Oh yeah, it's all cultivated bullshit, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a I lot would of believe it. who knows if the kid wants to be filmed. When yeah, 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 like what the fuck? I, I I used to be like, oh, you know, once the vlogging like stopped, you know, I, we would do a Family Channel later in life, and then now I'm like looking at it after like stepping. It's so it's almost like brainwashing. I, I think sometimes vlogging, where it's like kind of like you get so stuck in the mindset of like bigger, more money, yeah. more AdSense, and like maybe that's how maybe I'm just fucking weird, and that's how my brain worked. But I kept trying to outdo myself, or kept trying to make more money doing it, and like wowing it, and like kind of doing all that stuff. And once I finally stepped away, I'm taking it in real life, and it's fucking cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, that's not weird at all. Like everyone wants to overcome sure. yeah. previous stuff in their life. But. Sure. I always kind of just coasted. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest, like I was like in my in my crew. And I, I would have never thought that random videos of like random shit. Occasionally, I'd be like, "All right, I'm gonna do like a a video that I actually think about, and yeah. I really want to do this." Have you guys done like therapy or anything like that before? Yeah. I no, I have a very tricky yeah. relationship with therapy. I had I had a tricky relationship with therapy before I started it too. I was like, I guess I had a psychiatrist first for anxiety medicine. Sure. Like I, Prozac and like clomp and for panic attacks and stuff like that. And she kept on saying like you should really do therapy and stuff. And I was like I kind of have a reservation for therapy because like my, my, one of my brothers went to therapy and kind of broke my mom's heart like calling her after like stuff that he learned in therapy that was like you know he's bringing up past traumas and shit like that. And I was yeah. like I just feel like I don't need to go through like bringing up my past traumas or whatever the fuck they are. Like that's yeah. water under the bridge for me. And then I ended up going, and like the first time was it was great, but it was like surface level. So right. that was that was my experience. Um, so I feel that. And you, I had a session like a very long time with therapy when I was in high school. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't like it because then I found out that the therapist that I had was actually very close friends with my stepdad. So kind of like broke some form of doctor patient confidentiality there right so i i didn't trust therapists for a very long time and yeah, then i tried to sense. go back to therapy a little bit ago and i feel like the lady just like completely dismissed me so we're on the hunt for a good therapist oh yeah you have to find someone who fits <laughs> yeah for right. sure yeah. for some reason the one that i got the last time i was like this lady's blunt she says <laughs> fuck I like her. <laughs> yeah, that's, Perfect. Dude, that's exactly how I decide whether or not like I hire someone too. It's when they say fuck. It's so <laughs> weird. But like, no, genuinely, like when people are like fully like okay with like saying things that remotely yeah. like don't seem like in the job description of whatnot. Yeah, I, I don't know why I trust them ten times more. Dude, swearing is such a weird thing. I feel like the older generations like if you swear you're dumb. Right, it's but like, when I what? it's so crazy like nowadays when like I see someone like un- unauthentically kind of like just speaking the way that they want to and like maybe like the way they act and stuff like that, I end up trusting them more because. They're not afraid to hide exactly what they're yeah. going to say. It's also if they like match your energy, right? Like that's how I felt. Like I was like, oh, she's kind of like matching my energy here. Like sure. she saw that I'm like loose with stuff. I'm like, yeah, I did a lot of fucking drugs. My mom did this. My dad did this. Mm-hmm. Blah blah blah. Fuck fuck fuck. And she was like, well, fuck it. You're gonna die someday. Don't worry about it. Like, <laughs> yeah. oh, that's <laughs> dope. That's what you mean. Yeah. That's super sick. <laughs> Weirdly, that's super sick. I love that. I loved it. So she was great. We've all been through, all been through shit. Who hasn't? I don't know. Kevin's never been through any shit. Right. He's a fucking little pussy. Right. Whoa. No past traumas. Nothing. Kevin, he's about to go to dental dentist. school, bro. You're gonna have some crazy shit. Now. Yeah. yeah. You're, be working You're getting a root home. canal first day. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's about to get his four wisdom teeth out, dude. Wow. Oh yeah, that's some that's some traumatic shit that's right some there. Clickbait. Yeah, right. you don't want to try it. Third dental surgery. Dude, my first two wisdom teeth they came out. I was like, ooh, pain pill. Great. Let me have a second one. Great. Let me have a third one because I don't really feel it yet. Great right. seizure. 
You had a Boom. seizure? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> I, I, I don't think I'll have that problem. No, I mean like I didn't I wasn't even in pain after the first yeah. one. I was like, mm, maybe I'll get like a little high off this painkiller <laughs> after the second one. And so I took the second wow. one. And then I I didn't actually have a seizure. I took the third one. I choked on my gauze and passed out. Oh god. <laughs> Well, I, I'm assuming at this point we all probably have to take a piss. So, dude, sure. Yeah, he's, he's, drank a lot of water. <laughs> yes. he's been very hydrated throughout this entire. Oh my yeah. god! Yeah. I, I know gallon, you got though. this for everyone. I kind of just drank all the waters. That's cool. Respect. That's cool. Hey, that's good. <laughs> and we got a bubbler out there. We can refill those because I only brought two. Um, <laughs> so you're out of the jug. Not to be. I'm conserving. Wow. Yeah. I have a car ride home. He's rationing. His Dude, I, I don't know. I'm an anxious person, so I have a water bottle with me every time I drive. I have to have a water bottle with me. I mean, I have to have the water bottle with me everywhere I go, basically. Yeah. Um, when my anxiety is really bad, I have to like carry it in to a grocery store with me, too. So, But anyway, so we all have to pee now. Yeah. I want to say thank you guys so much for coming on. Is there anything else Thanks, that you want to add, talk about before I leave this I room? Think so. No, no. Thanks for having good. us. Yeah, thank you for having yeah, us. Thank thanks you. for coming by. Yeah, yeah. Seriously, it was I, it was a really good talk. I like. What that. do you think that NGMI stands for? In our in our name. MGMI. NGMI, right behind. You. NGMI. NGMI. Yeah. And then if you look at all the other posters, there's uh, things that they say on them. With not, the same... not gonna make it. <laughs> you read the poster. What? <laughs> what does what? that mean? Initially, this podcast was about like success stories, like where you came from and whatnot. And like honestly, you kind of you kind of describe that you guys with your relationship, starting off in a car and being homeless and and making it. Like that 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 was the idea of like kind of like we would we would find stories of like how people transitioned from what they were doing to what they are doing now. That's beautiful. Yeah. I thought it was like a plan, your dark humor. And also, yeah, yeah that was like both. a back. Yeah. 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 I, was, I would expect it was back up plan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not going to make it. Baby. <laughs> it seems like a joke you would make. Oh yeah. I talk yeah. about dying all the time. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> No, but genuine. This is a great talk. Seriously. Yeah, this is. I thought this was great. And I got hats yeah. out of it too, which is fucking yeah. phenomenal. Yeah, hats, gummies. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching the Engine My Podcast. Go check out Alex Warren and Cover. Uh, almost Ooh. Warren, not yet. Almost. Warren's not <laughs> my real last name. Hughes. Yeah. Hughes. Right, How do you know that? I watched the music video. Oh, bad. Cool. <laughs> <laughs>